So I'm here with Special Ops Ashley Coolin, and she's actually um, a contract employee of Penny Sleep. So she is paid to be yes. here, right? So I think it, I think it's important that we give upfront full disclosure. But your journey with me began how many years ago? Almost five years ago. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I can't believe McKinley is turning five. Yeah. And when you were searching out for a, a sleep solution, yes. kind of give our viewers a little bit of an idea of what that looked like. Well, I mean, I went down the rabbit hole of Google, <laughs> as we all do. <laughs> yes. How to get Been my there. baby to sleep, um, and probably at three in the morning while my baby was asleep on my boob. And I tried everything by myself. I tried the Ferber method, just like put her in the crib and like let her cry and close the door. And I could actually hear her crying in my head even when she wasn't crying. And that did not work for me. Um, I tried the nursing to sleep. I tried the rocking to sleep. And my baby's a big baby. So she grew out of her swing pretty early. She grew out of these things pretty early. So it got to the point where I didn't know what else to do. And so I put my mom pride aside and I turned to social media and I said, I need help. Mm. How do I get my child to sleep at night? And I had two separate girlfriends message me and say, have you heard of a pediatric sleep consultant? And I said, what? What's what that? is that? And so immediately Google. And before, you know, you got those that great advice there, but yeah. did you get like a lot of overwhelming and conflicting information or just like platitude? Like, oh, just, you know, it's, you know. If I had a dime for any time or even a penny for any time someone said she'll sleep when she's tired, I would be mortgage free. Yeah. Flat out. Uh, my daughter was more than tired. She was eye rubbing. She actually had like little rashes under her eyes from like sucking on her hands and like rubbing her eyes because she was so tired. All I wanted to do was help her sleep. And then there's people, you know, like, oh, she'll grow out of it. Or, oh, this is the four month sleep regression. This is this month's sleep regression. And, and I just felt in my heart, like, no, like, I just feel like there need, there's another solution to this and I'm just missing it. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. And, and, and I, so what, what were some of your fears? Like when you started to investigate like this dreaded word of sleep training. Yeah. Because there's a lot of judgment around sleep training. At least I felt a lot of judgment 13 years ago when my little man wasn't sleeping. I was told that, hey, I signed up to be a parent and a parent is a 24-7 job and I should just suck it up and, you know, that's that's your job as or a mother. maybe that's just the kind of baby that she right. is. Right. Yeah. 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 So what were... What was one of the biggest fears that you had when you started thinking about sleep training? Well, I mean, obviously I was worried about the impact it would have on her. Like, I mean, babies cry. Yes, they do. But how much is too much? How long is too long? How hard is too hard? What impacts would that have on her and her physical health, mental health, emotional health? And what impacts would it have on my physical health and mental health and emotional health? Because I don't love crying. I don't. I'm like I can't wait to hear my baby cry. Like that. No mom no. says that. And so, well, actually, I've ha I've had a few clients <laughs> who have called me up and said I don't care if my baby cries, and I'm like I care. I mean, they, I mean, they might say that they don't care, but if they had the choice, given an ideal situation, I'm sure right. they would choose it. Yeah. So I mean, obviously, that was the biggest fear is like putting the trust in someone else to help my child at such a young age was very scary. I'm a type yeah. A control freak and I wanted to be the perfect mom and do it perfectly myself, but that wasn't working. And mm -hmm. so I had to put all that aside and, and reach out. Yeah. And there's lots of fears when we're raising our children, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, you don't want them to feel like they're being neglected. You don't want to have this, are they going to be going to therapy in 20 years because I left them to cry for however many minutes, for however many months you know, when they were newborn. And these are legitimate concerns. Yeah. It's really legitimate yeah. concerns. Yeah. And one of the that's one of the benefits of working with somebody on the team here at Pammy Sleep is that you can get these fears out on the table and then that individual can hold your hand through the entire process. And Absolutely. sometimes they're reassuring you, saying, yes, that's normal. And other times during the journey together, they'll be saying, let's modify the game plan. I don't, I can't remember now, that goes back almost <laughs> five years, but I don't know how, how often we were modifying our original game plan to you. Well, my first daughter, she was pretty textbook. Yeah. She was like, it's 
top of the class like she when we finally started to lay the groundwork she picked it up pretty quick but my second daughter and I always thought oh you know it's just easier with your every kid that you have I already knew the steps and the process of the baby sleep but I wanted to start as a newborn so even though I am technically part of the Pamni sleep family and team and I have access to this information I still knew the value of hiring well because every kid is different for the second right? and and different is yes. like so is putting it so lightly because my child my second child was born with quite a few health complications mm. and she so had a even though disorder. you knew it was gonna work because of mm -hmm. mckinley right yeah and how old was mckinley when Daniel she was, was born uh she was just turned three just turning three so you had three years of phenomenal sleep yes but you still had new fears mm -hmm. when it came to Daniela well, and teaching her to sleep. Yes, because I mean, you're adjusting to a new family and how do I do two separate bedtime routines? Who's going to bed first? What's going on there? But then my daughter ended up having like GERD, really bad like reflux and breathing issues, and all of these things. And yet we were still able to very gently lay the groundwork of sleep from a newborn to the point where when she was three months old, she was still already sleeping yeah, nine uh, hours through the night, yeah. waking for her feet and going to bed. Yeah, so so for special ops with baby number two, mm -hmm. which is what I did with baby number two yeah. as well, with the wisdom that you learn, mm -hmm. we both decided to instill habits rather than change habits with our second children. Yeah. And it's the most gentle way of it teaching is. your children to sleep because there's potentially no tears involved. Yeah. So let's get back to this whole damage my child fear because it's a legitimate concern that parents have. Now looking back, and I know you're being paid to be here today, <laughs> right? And tell the world, but you know, uh, from mother to mother or from mother to father mm -hmm. or mother to grandparent, yeah. right? How do you feel now? Oh my gosh. Um... My husband actually, I think, is a bigger fan of you than I am, and and we're like besties, and we work together, and we like we love being around each other. But I think my husband is the bigger raver. Like there's sometimes he comes up and he I mean he does the bedtime routines with the daughters, and he's able to like he goes in and he's like, oh honey, I got this. You go have a bath. I, I'm gonna put the girls to bed for you. Right. And he comes up behind me when I'm like you know making us a, a pouring glass of wine, or we're making a, our own special dinner together to have once the girls are sleeping, and. He, He's like, you know, he's like, we got to get Pam more wine. And I'm, like, <laughs> and I'm like, why? And he's like, look what she does for us. Like, even though our day was total chaos with these girls, they're just bananas. They're so busy. We close the door at 7, 7.30 at night and they will sleep and we don't have to worry about them. They're, yes. they're going to get great sleep and be healthy and happy when they wake up first thing in the morning. We know when they're going to wake up in the morning. We know how much time we can spend to each other and still take care of our, like, our sleep and our mental health. Right. So like... and Well, let's get back to that fear of damage. Yeah. Them. So do you think that two-week journey that you embarked on with me do you think McKinley's going to end up in the therapy chair like you mentioned <laughs> I mean there might be other reasons why she ends up in the therapy chair but right. it definitely won't be from her sleep no I this from kid sleep training no not from sleep training and this here in is sleep by the way I really despise the word sleep training that's not we what we do at my company it's all about teaching children so we call it sleep learning yes and there's a fundamental difference you know, with my loving simple practical and fun solution so yeah. yeah so McKinley has clearly benefited from all these healthy sleep you don't worry that she somehow damaged her not at all uh, yeah. if anything I think it's it's helped her there were a lot of things that she when she was a baby she was really resistant to trying like new things the jelly jumper the extra saucer all of those things right before we had met up with you we would put her in these items and she would just lose it she it was like change is bad it's scary i don't like it get me out of here just stage five cry like stage one like my whimper stage five is like rage cry um and then it was once she was sleeping through the night it was like okay well let's try this or that and it was just night and day all of a sudden she was loving the jolly jumper and giving her for like 20 minutes we couldn't get her out of it same thing with the extra sauce so she'd be in it for as long as I was cooking dinner, she was just happily plunking along with yeah. the different educational toys. And it was just, it was mind blowing. And right after right, we had been trying with the rolling over and the sitting up and the crawling and within a matter of weeks of sleep training, it was like, boom, 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 one right after another. And I can't say for sure if one had 
anything to do with the other, but I know how much better at things I am when I get a good night's sleep. Oh, well, there's science right? to back that. Yeah, up. and so there's it was like all of a sudden she was rolling that. over in both directions. All of a sudden, within a few weeks, she was yes. sitting up on her own, and with a few weeks after that, she was crawling, and mm -hmm. it was all in this short window of time where we had struggled to try and get her to these milestones before when sleep was still a challenge. Right. Yeah, so if yeah. anything, I think it was probably the greatest benefit ever, like my kid barely gets sick or if she gets sick, she'll get like a fever for half a day and she'll have a longer nap mm -hmm. and be fine. Rob and I will get taken down <laughs> like we've been hit with the plague. And of course she's fine. She still wants to play. She still wants to do all these things, but thank goodness. Right. We can say good night at 7 p.m. and know that she's going to continue to get that great sleep. sleep. And we can get some sleep, right? right? You know? But I think, if anything, it's it's helped her immune system. It's helped her ability to adjust to different situations. She's in, she's in preschool right now. Yeah. And in preschool... You know, like there, she there's no fear. She was just like I feel like it gave her confidence. It, she because she had such a great sleep, she is able to kind of process all of those fears and, and emotions and everything in your brain as you do mm -hmm. when you're sleeping. Yes. When you get that deeper state of sleep, so when I send her off to school, like it's just like I don't have to worry about. Yeah, her. and I, and I'm yeah. sure over the last almost five years, there's been nights where you haven't been able to honor her her sleep. Oh yeah. And you've seen the impact the next day <laughs> when she doesn't get a good night's rest. Yes, yeah, right? so on the days we've skipped her nap when she yeah. was younger, or yeah, we've kept yeah. her up longer than normal, and she gets that second wind. And yeah. She's like crawling on the ceilings like something out of a horror movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely, we've yes, seen that. Exactly. <laughs> we've seen that. And this is what makes me sad because there's a, there's so many babies and children yeah. that are not taught this vital life skill and it's ha they're suffering. Mm -hmm. And it's quite the opposite. Sleep learning through Pamni Sleep actually enhances your child's life and well being, not just immediately, but mm -hmm. potentially for the long term. And when I was a sleep deprived mom ready to jump off the bridge and take the baby with me. I was really scared about the fact that I could potentially damage my son. And there was an internet 13 years ago, but I really feel for parents today because I was overwhelmed with the amount of information 13 years ago. It's even more overwhelming and so contradictory. It, is. it really is. So 13 years ago, I made the decision to trust a professional and I took the risk to teach my son to sleep and it made such a profound impact on me that I wanted to help others. So I can tell you confidently, those of you who are watching, that when you teach a child to sleep in the right way, it will not damage them yeah. it won't they, it'll just enhance their lives and their health if if I can be completely honest I feel like if we had gone on the journey of lack of sleep further than where we went mm -hmm. my daughter would have been at greater risk of damage in, in mentally emotionally physically because my mental state mentally emotionally physical physically was declining with each week that we weren't getting sleep right. and so I think both of us were at a greater risk of something happening that you would not be able to imagine at the time but I think there was a greater risk there totally than us getting help yeah my situation her getting rest, I would my never have self I would never had a second child right? yeah I that was the <laughs> and, am I uh, yeah. yeah and so <laughs> I wasn't even sure I wanted the one I had <laughs> yes exactly made up made up I totally get that too um, so yeah it, it really it, sleep is the foundation to good health and without this healthy foundation you can't build the house mm -hmm. you just you need the healthy foundation of sleep and then your child will will thrive yes. and my argument is it's not selfish to want your child to sleep it's actually self full because you can't raise a healthy child until you start with a healthy parent so I can confidently tell you that no done the right way and when you work with a professional like Pamni Sleep you will not damage your child. They will only benefit yeah. by learning this vital life skill. And you can learn more by reading my free advice section. You can reach out through Instagram and Facebook and ask more questions. I'm live on Facebook as well as Instagram. We've got a YouTube channel and more. So, and the best people to talk to or past clients like special ops. So I invite you to go to the love letters section and hear from other parents. Or if you're ready to get sleep now, 
Just go into the Get Sleep Now section and we'd be delighted to help you and your family and transform your life just like Special Ops was. Twice. Twice. <laughs> <laughs>